This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Sylvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is July 15th, 2024. Jonathan Osborne here, as always, joined by my co-host, Luke Sylvia. Luke, how how much time now do we have uh, before college football comes out? Because it seems like it's all anybody's talking about. Everybody's looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. it it's uh, So there's some, like, dispute EA's website for people that have either, like, EA Play, which is included in Ultimate Pass, uh, Ultimate Game Pass or whatever. Uh, that 10-hour trial was rumored to start Tuesday. And pre-order also to Tuesday, but now there's some discourse about it. it might be Monday at 4 p.m. And if you look at the game in your, you know, on your console for the details of the game, it says release date so, uh, Monday, July 15th at 4 p.m. So I don't know when this is going to be available for people to pre-order or EA Play. I do know that officially it will be out for anybody and everybody Friday. So we'll see. Uh but I am I have consumed way too much content. I've watched dudes play that you know they I think EA has done a really good job with like distributing it to content creators and generating the hype even more. And honestly, they didn't need to do any of this. Like the hype was already going to be organic because it's a game that's been gone for a literal decade. And everybody loved the game. So for it to be back is insane in its own right but they have done it well and i have watched dudes already rebuild dynasties or like they've started it they've done the first season their road to glory and they've shown the transfer portal and the nil stuff and everything it's just there's so much stuff and it's such a game of depth that you're not going to get naturally bored with the game you're not going to have your first lull of like oh i might be tired of this game for quite a while because there's so much you can do from road to glory to Dynasty Online with your friends, up to 30 teams possible, which is insane. Uh, to obviously your quick play online, Ultimate Team is in this as well. That'll probably be the last thing that I touch with this game because it's not Madden. I don't care that much about that in depth of college players. Like you got your Power Five guys and some group of five players, but I was like, other than that, I don't really care. Um, and they're going to have probably anybody and everybody in that Ultimate Team. So it is cool. But uh, but yeah, there's just so much stuff that you can pick and choose for a while what you want to do. I don't remember the last time that a game was hyped up quite this much. Like the hype around it is yeah. unreal. Every literally anyone and everyone is talking about it. And uh, Luke and Kevin still need people for their dynasty league. So you know, if you want to be in the dynasty <laughs> league, hit, hit hit up Luke and Kevin because they're they're dying for more people. I tell you what, <laughs> I I hate you for that. Um, we do not. Uh, we have eighteen. And that is probably more than I than I want to do, but but it'll be fun, and it is it does suck that that's the only mode that's not cross platform, so Jonathan can't join in on the fun because he has a PS5, and it's like it's so dumb. But I mean, I'm sure it's just be things that I don't comprehend. If they would, they could, but I there's got to be something because the rest of the the rest Every of the game, game is cross platform now. Is is but like me and you can play a quick play game against each other. Right. We just can't play Dynasty. And so, which isn't the end of the world, like you and I, I'm sure we'll hop on the sticks and do Florida versus UNC or whatever, but it's, 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 uh, I might have it's, to, it's I might have to load time. up FSU for, for that, uh, oh, for that no match. You don't. Kevin's going to do that enough for me. I, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, yeah. Well, anyways, that's going to be a lot of fun. I know everybody is looking forward to that. So, uh, yeah, we have some good stuff uh, planned for later on in the show here. Uh, best friend, brother, um, cousin. Uh, I'm going to stop right there because he requested that we stop right there. Uh, you'll hear that in our <laughs> conversation with Drew Gooden. Uh, always fun to to get his perspective. And again, we mentioned this towards the end of our conversation with Drew, but just how good he is at like the YouTube commentary and all the work that he does there. The ability that he has to still be super locked in to the magic and into the Dolphins, as you all hear, just always really impressed with him. And as funny as he is, he's also just like a super smart guy and just a, a great guy all around. So we really appreciate Drew uh, joining the show. 
Luke, uh, next uh, thing we want to talk about, Droop. Uh, Droop. I mixed <laughs> Drew and Group together here. The group draw, maybe that's what I got together there, uh, for this year's Emirates NBA Cup. We're no longer calling this the in-season tournament. It is now the Emirates NBA Cup. The group draw results uh, came out the other day, and the Magic are in the East group of death with the Knicks, the 76ers, the Nets, and the Charlotte Hornets. What were your uh, what were your thoughts here on uh, on the Magic's draw? Obviously, you've got a couple teams that you feel pretty good about that, like, oh, we can probably beat them. But with the Nets, like, I have, you know, this is what year year two with them in the group, same group as us, and we didn't have the fondest of memories with uh, with them. They smacked us up, I think, in a regular season game, and then they did the same in, an, in the end season, the cup. So I, I would like to think that they'll be, especially without, you know, Bridges, will be in a better spot against them this year. Uh, and then, you know, you, you feel pretty good in that respect. But then you look at the other teams you've got, and it's like, those are going to be toss-ups. Every night in the NBA feels pretty 50-50 right now for us. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it it doesn't seem like we're going to come in here and we're going to get our doors blown off no matter who it is. So I do feel good on that front. If we were a little worse in terms of talent and everything else with this team, I'd feel terrible about this group. But I do think that it's cool. I think that it's nice to have things that really aren't that consequential at all, but they are made to feel like they do. Because for them, like, obviously, it's the money that that is probably the... The, the thing that gets them going there. But for us as fans, it's like if you want to like that automatically just feels like a playoff atmosphere because they change the court and they do things that make it feel different. So I think that like it's high stakes, but not really. And I think that that's a great test run for gauging where you're at. And I, and I think that's absolutely what we're going to find with this, with the cup. I was happy that we were able to dodge Boston and we didn't end up in Boston's group yeah. again. But the fact that you get both New York and Philadelphia in the same group, you're you're going to have to beat at least one of those teams if you want to win yeah. the, the group stage in advance. I think part of the the benefit of having three really strong teams is that like, well, if New York beats Philadelphia and and we beat, you know, uh, New York and and you know somehow it ends up favorable for us in in terms of tiebreakers. Like you could see the Magic moving on if they're able to win three of those four games. Uh, but the fact that you're at Brooklyn, you're at New York, it would have been nice to have both Philadelphia and New York at home. But yeah, the, the road games are going to be at Brooklyn, at New York, and then we'll be home for Charlotte. We'll be home for Philadelphia. I, I like our odds really against all of these teams. New York is probably the team in this group that scares me the most. But the fact that we get Philadelphia at home, I like that. You have to beat Brooklyn in, in Charlotte just in general, yeah. even if it's not the NBA Cup at this point. Uh, so I'm I'm excited. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get the same odds that I did last year for the Magic making it out no. of the, the group stage, but I'll still be putting a little bit of money there. And a lot of people you, are picking the Magic to be like one of the wild card teams like if they don't come out of that group. Which is interesting. And, and the good news is, is that at least last year, Tom Thibodeau did not treat the, in, the Cup, the in-season tournament, what are we calling it? If, like, what it's do we want to casually cup. even call it's, it? It's the NBA Cup. Okay, so Emirates we can call NBA it like the, the. We could call it like the Cup when we're referring. Sure. Just so I know, because I keep going in, in between in my head between that and end season tournament. So last year in the Cup, Tom Thibodeau wasn't playing it like a playoff series. At, at least not to the extremes that we saw this past postseason, where Josh Hart was playing forty eight minutes a game in in the playoffs, right? Like last year, I'm looking at their group play game against Miami. He played a pretty standard nine nine man rotation, and Josh Hart played 26 minutes. So even though he could run him into the ground minutes wise, he didn't. So that's the good news well, I mean, is that Jaylen we Brunson probably won't be playing a shortened. Jalen Brunson just took a big pay cut. He's going to need that that 500k or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Poor poor him. He's gonna he's gonna really be hurting for money. So maybe he'll be he'll be playing his butt off, but. No, I, I think it's very interesting. The, the whole thing is still new. So just getting the concept down of, okay, how are coaches playing it? And it is interesting now to see, to look at that, those rotations versus the playoffs. 
It's like it's very different still. They're not tr- really true. It's so early in the season. They're not going to treat it and put these guys' bodies on the line like that for at least like the Knicks, like Tom Thibodeau. It's the only one I've really looked at right now. But I get the feeling that, that was the case everywhere. So it, it'll be interesting to see how they play it. But I, I, regardless, I do think like it's it's made up high stakes basketball, and it's everybody buys into it. So it feels that way in a lot of respects, and I, I think that everybody's going to show up to Kia. They're going to show out because we got what? Who are the the home games? We have um, Philadelphia and Charlotte at home. Okay, yeah. So you've got to go to MSG and uh, Brooklyn. So. We'll see how it how it pans out, but I, I we're to the point where yeah everything feels fifty fifty against good teams. So is it unfortunate? Yes, but it could be worse. We could be that West group that's got everybody is very very good. It could be worse, but yeah, looking forward to the NBA Cup this year. Let's talk a little summer league. So we've had two games so far. The Magic are. 2-0. Uh, they had a big 27-point win over the Cleveland Cavaliers on Friday, uh, which Kevin and I, and even you joined the the playback for a little bit there. Uh, and then, what's tonight? Sunday night, as we're recording this, um, and as really as we were recording with uh, Drew earlier, um, the Magic won 91-86 over the New Orleans Pelicans. So they are, right now are 2-0 and throughout the Summer League. I just wanted to talk a little bit about what we're seeing. So right now I'm on NBA.com and I have the the summer league stats up. So just want to go through and, and give you guys an idea of, of how guys are, are playing. So main guys we're going to talk about are Anthony Black, Jet Howard, Tristan De Silva. And there's a, a, a bonus that we're going to talk about in, in Jay Huff because he's just been a lot of fun to watch. But Anthony Black in two games, averaging 27.6 minutes per game. 12 and a half points. He's shooting 50% from the floor, 25% from behind the arc, just two attempts per game there. Uh, five and a half free throw attempts per game, which has been really nice to see. Two and a half rebounds, 2.5 assists, or 4.5 assists, excuse me. Three turnovers a game, but two and a half steals and a half block. Jet Howard, uh, 18 points per game. He's shooting 53% from the floor and 46.7% from behind the arc on seven and a half attempts per game. And he's averaging three and a half assists. Like the playmaking flashes from Jet Howard really have been a lot of fun to watch and have just been really impressive. And then Tristan De Silva in two games, 25.1 points per game, 18 points per game, shooting 57% from the floor, 54.5% from behind the arc on 5.5 attempts. And he's averaging four and a half rebounds per game and just right at three assists. So we're seeing Tristan De Silva do a little bit of everything. And then last but not least, Jay Huff and Puff, and he'll blow your house down. Jay oh, Huff brother. the Magic Dragon, as some people <laughs> are calling him. 14 and a half points per game. He's shooting 60% from the floor, and he's throwing in six rebounds per game as well. Let's see, how many uh, blocks per game? Uh, just a block per game, but he's doing a, a good job of of defending the rim. Luke, what what have been like your main takeaways, you know, for this Magic team through the the first couple of games, and what have you seen from some of these guys? Is is Jay Huff the the new? Uh, oh man, what's his name? I've been trying to rack my brain about his name for the last thirty seconds. Tall dude, blonde hair, international player from summer league, like a season or two ago. Giannis, uh, Giannis Tima. Yes. No, I think yeah, he's yeah, better. Yeah. I think he's a little bit better than that, but I think the, but the infatuation was a lot of fun. The infatuation is 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 growing. I think everybody loves Tima during that and everybody's starting to love Jay Huff. So, and the more that, you know, Anthony it Black that and Jay Tima and, had like that international allure, like drove a Lamborghini, like all that, that yeah. stuff kind of helps. Yeah, yeah, that no doubt. But um. Yeah. So Jay Huff has been a nice surprise, obviously, as as you noted. But Jed Howard was awesome, especially in that game one. I would imagine they're probably shut down after today. We'll see what they do, but but that's what I imagine. But just the way that that Jed Howard asserted himself in game one to go 
shoot jack up 10 threes is hilarious and incredible and he shot five of ten and did it effectively so jed howard was a pleasant surprise and 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 we knew like we we had hopes for him but honestly if it was like okay what's the what's a game that would make you like what what's the perfect ideal situation for a jet howard summer league game what would you love to see i just want to see him shoot the ball like that's what i want that's what this roster should want so for him to go five of ten from three also show off some of his playmaking and vision as well was just cherry on top and i I even like tristan da silva was awesome too much of the same from him like as far as what i wanted to see and we got to see him shooting the basketball also with the four assists zero turnovers from him in that first game and then um i'm I'm trying to look tonight what he have he had two assists three turnovers not as great but he just that first game for him to have that assist to turnover ratio was super impressive as a guy that has never played an NBA game. And we've seen summer league takes its toll on and really can get the best of some guys as rookies in summer league. So just to see him level headed, I love that he has a B and jet out there with him. And that's something he alluded to and his like of media availability of I'm just happy. Like I'm thankful they make my life easier. So he just seems great and and did much of the same in game two, except he scores 23 points, three of six, gets to the free throw line, shoots four free throws in that game, shot four free throws in the other game. Uh, I think Tristan Da Silva will be key in our rotation for years to come. And call it overreaction, but like that's already where you probably could have been and convinced yourself of before Summer League that he would turn out to be that. And just to see that he is turning out to be that so far in Summer League, he seems super mature, super smart. I, I'm excited for him as well. I want to be on the record with this. I've already tweeted it out, but I want to say it here. Give a two-way to Jay Huff. That, that's, that's where I'm at. Mm. I've seen enough. He's got good feel. He's athletic, smart with the basketball, Has seems to have really good chemistry with a lot of guys on, on this summer league roster, and he's just a lot of fun to watch. So like Jay Huff, I believe he won Defensive Player of the Year in the G League a couple of years ago. Yeah. He's playing so well. I think he actually like legitimately might make a team somewhere, might make a roster. Probably not, but I, I wouldn't say it's like a zero percent chance. I think like maybe like a twenty five percent chance. If he doesn't make a roster somewhere and we don't use a two way on Jay Huff, I will legitimately be upset about that because the the dude has just been awesome. Um, and would love to to see him on on a two way here in Orlando. Now I have to ask you this. We've obviously talked about Jay Huff and Tristan Da Silva and Jet Howard some here. What have you learned or yet to learn with Anthony Black so far in these two games? So we saw flashes of it in the second game. Um, I don't think it's what I've yet to learn about him. I, I feel like we we saw enough of him last year. The the playmaking has been on full effect. Like six assists tonight in this one. He had you know three assists in the in the first game. It's not always like the pass that he makes, but it's the pass that he makes that allows for the next pass. Like a lot of plays, it's it's the hockey assist. Um, mm-hmm. But just want to see him getting like just downhill more like easily. Like he's struggling to get around some of these G League guys with the handle. And to me, I don't want to overreact, but I would be lying if I said that I wasn't at least slightly concerned about that. Uh, because like I, I just really assumed Anthony Black to look way too good for summer league, and he has looked too good for summer league, but he hasn't looked as good as I was anticipating, at least in that particular aspect. Defensively, obviously, he's been really good, like moving the ball, he's been really good, but I just assumed that he would just be able to get past guys a little bit better than he has been. But to his credit, he has been able to use angles and use his body to get to spots. And he's so strong and has enough touch around the rim. Like he had a a big play with like a minute to go where he's getting pressured uh, basically at half court. The handle was, you know, got away from him a little bit, but he was able to recover, get into the rim, absorb contact and knock down a tough shot to help extend the Magic's lead late in the game. But like I thought we were going to see a bit more there. I would assume that maybe he plays one more game, like at the absolute most here in summer league. They may decide to shut these guys down now and start getting looks at other guys on this summer league roster. 
but I would say that is like the, that's not the biggest takeaway that I have. Like the biggest takeaways that I have, number one is Tristan De Silva looks legit, right? Jet Howard, I sort of expected, like we talked about, well, we want to see big things out of Jet Howard. So I somewhat expected him to do what he's doing. He's showing a bit more than I thought he was going to. But Tristan De Silva, number one, Jet Howard, then Jay Huff. Um, and then like the next thing to me would be that we just haven't seen a B sort of take that next step. And I think if he's going to be like the point guard of the future for the, the magic, we need to see that starting to develop. And it's a little bit concerning that, you know, he's had an off season to this point and hasn't taken a big leap there. But I also watched Jalen Suggs be like one of the worst three point shooters in the league for two straight years. And it looked like maybe he was never going to figure it out from deep. And then this year he was like almost a 40% three point shooter. So I'm, I'm not saying that to say that a B can't get there. Like his ability to, to make reads and to know where to go with the basketball, like from an organization standpoint, like getting the offense into what they're trying to do. He's been fantastic moving the ball. He's been fantastic. It's just that ability to like break your man down and get to the rim has been because like, some of the reason that he's getting fouled on these attempts and getting to the free throw line is just simply because he's not totally getting past his man. Like he's getting uh, past him a little bit. They're trying to recover and then he's getting fouled at the rim. But like, I want to, he's not going to be like John Wall, right? Doesn't have that level of burst, but like, I just want to see you shake a guy. You're loose. It happens so fast that the center doesn't really have time to rotate and you've got an open layup. And we just haven't seen that a ton to this point. Yeah. The, the downside of having a, good team a playoff team one that is not in even in the 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 play-in conversations is that you can't always prioritize development as much as they talk about development and internal growth those guys like the mosley and and all those guys showed that we still want to win and we saw that a lot last year which i think is that why they that you know that that seems to me why anthony black didn't get as much run like if you're prioritizing development with your number six pick, he gets more play time last year other than just the fact that someone got injured and you needed to put him there so the bench kept continuity, right? So for me, it comes from that. And it comes from when he is in the game, you were playing him off ball largely. He wasn't getting end game reps as the lead ball handler on the team. And I don't think that's the right call. I don't think he should have been last year. I think what, what we did was fine. And then you could have argued in the playoffs that he he deserved some minutes and just to get some playoff experience more than he did, obviously. But at the same time, it's just the 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 back and forth of being a, a playoff team. And I do believe that if the Magic were terrible last year, AB would have gotten lead guard reps. But I also think that they saw that he just doesn't have it right now, in in the, in terms of being able to be just defender. He shows so many more flashes in other areas that if he can figure that part out, beating guys off dribble, which admittedly is a huge part of being a That's point guard. like the only like piece to the puzzle for me with AB. That, like if he figures absolutely. that out. Yeah. Because defensively, he's got it. At the rim, finishing through contact, he's got it. As a cutter, I think he's got it. Shooting the open three and making it, I, I for the most part, trust him to make it in the catch and shoot scenario where he is open. But... If you can't, it's the same thing we talked about last summer league with him. That we showed concern that he couldn't beat guys off the dribble. So it's kind of same old, you know, same song and dance, except he has gotten better in the other areas. And so he does look better in this summer. Like he looks good in the summer league, all things considered. And uh, like tonight with six assists, impressive. So we'll continue to see. I'm by no means, nobody's hitting a panic button on Anthony Black. You shouldn't be. But. You just the the one thing we are looking for is beating your guy off the dribble. But largely, I've just been impressed and encouraged by what we've seen. Tristan da Silva, like obviously, is the real question mark for us coming into this. And like I said, he's shown that he he could be a rotation guy. Tristan da Silva is already like too good for summer league. Like it's it's been two games and it's pretty obvious that he's too good for summer league. Like a B, like the the six assists. I'm not even going to look at the turnovers. The Magic had five different guys that had at least three turnovers in this game. They had 19 turnovers at it as a team. They were just really sloppy with the basketball. Like Tristan had three turnovers. Jed Howard had three turnovers. Like it was just a turnover party for the magic. But 
again, like AB is showing improvements in all of the other areas, just except like just beating his guy off the dribble. And that is going to be like the next part of his development. If he's going to be like the guy for the future, because the, the, the magic need guys on offense who can complement what Paolo and Franz do. And AB at this point, it, like him standing in the corner and just like waiting for an open three, that's more so of like them having to like carry the offense and, and he's just sort of along for the ride than it is him like really contributing in a real way. I just don't know how much with the amount that those guys are going to have the ball in their hands, how much he's going to be able to be like a connective piece if his job is to just be off the ball and, and, and shoot threes where like, that's what KCP is going to do right now. Um, but at a, obviously a higher rate, there's going to be more volume there. And then with Jalen, the argument that I would make for why Jalen is the better fit alongside those guys right now is because Jalen does have that threat. He maybe doesn't do it a ton yet. And it, that's what we talked about at the end of last season is the next step for Jalen is to be like, okay, you've shown flashes of being able to create for yourself. We need you to do yeah. that on a more consistent basis. But to me, Jalen has shown that like, oh, I can actually, you know, get past the guy and get to my mid-range jumper or like get to the rim. He's got to get better at finishing at the rim, especially through contact. But to me, at this point, he's shown that he can do that. And I don't mean to compare a guy that's going into his fourth year in Jalen and to A, B, a guy that's going into his second year. By no means should anyone's takeaway from Summer League be negative when it comes to A, B. It's just like, okay, hey, we want to see if you can do this in summer league. And it's like, okay, he may not be able to do that just yet. Maybe not at least at the level that we want him to. Right. Agreed. But overall, summer league has been a lot of fun to watch. Looking forward to the Magic's next matchup. See if uh, these guys keep playing. There's like, there's a real chance that if the Magic just play all these guys, like they could go on and win the, the summer league championship. But that you know was never going to be you know what was going to happen with the, with those guys. So, um, yeah, I will share. I will share one more thing. So our our guy Fazan is the biggest AB truther that I that I know, quite frankly. And we have a discourse back and forth. He thinks Anthony Black should start this year. That he has a case to be a point starting point guard for the Magic this year. I'm not there. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it should be expected to happen. I think we know the starting lineup. But regardless, his takeaway, he texted me and just said, wait a minute, oh, he, he and I, have, we, we had that conversation really like before, and I don't mean now we're putting Fazan on blast, it seems like, but we had that conversation <laughs> sort of like before free agency with the signing of Contavious Caldwell Pope. I don't, I genuinely don't know how you would make that argument. Like uh, AB is not going to start over Jalen Suggs. I, I think that's, I think it's just an agenda and he's sticking to it and I respect it. Fazan sticks to his stuff and. I admire him for it. But what I will say, he provided insight with Anthony Black and he he texted me and just said, like, I walked away today most impressed with AB. He finally showed me what I've been begging to see from him. And he goes on to, to say that he finally demonstrated his ability to uh, to be patient against traps, switch to blitzes, and most importantly, process and attack defensive shifts quickly. So if you want something from a guy that knows basketball, uh, the X's and O's and schematics way more than me, that's Fazan Amer. Uh So I will and, and take that's that my point. And, like organizationally, mm -hmm. right? Like right. reading the defense. Like I completely agree with all of that stuff. But for me, like out of a lead guard, yep. you have to be able to have that yep. in your bag that like, hey, no, right now I'm I'm just going to I'm not right. going to wait for the defense to adjust for me yep. that then find it and break it down. I'm going to be the guy that breaks it down by getting yeah. past my guy and putting this defense in a rotation. So that would be mm -hmm. the next thing that, that I would like yeah. to see. But no, Fazan's a hundred, a hundred percent right in that. Yeah. It's just like, I, I really want to see that next element from AB. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We're going to take a quick break before we get into our conversation with our friend Drew Gooden. Uh, before we do that, just want to give a quick word from our Patreon so if you want to help financially support The Six Man Show, you can find us at patreon.com slash The Six Man Show. We have different levels of tiers and, and benefits where you can join. Uh, we give a special shout out to our Hall of Fame elite tier patrons each and every episode. We're going to go ahead and start by giving a quick shout out to Court Cousins. And then again, 
Drew Gooden, friend of the program, patron of the program, Armin, Carson Tulo, Ellis, Jonathan Borges, normal magic player history, Gabe Gaines, Wiffle, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, Donkey Punch, Dave, Paolo and Francis Warren, Pierre A., Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Eduardo Sanchez, Daniel, Bobby Skinner, Goatee93, Teddy Sylvia, Doc Lopez, Fuchsia, Bill Fulton, Edmund Lagone, Jose Esquilin, Caleb Pete, Canvalism, Time Mr. TV, ESPN Really Sucks, Gear95, Shred, Junior Bruce, Half Reek, and Shahan177, Bobby the Don, Himlo, Ben Himro, RM Prof221, Ray Pastrana, Magic Kid714, Mysterious Mosley, Irish Magic Mike, Austin Lampy. Random Hustle, Only Franz, Maria, Keith Walls, Fritz, Bruv Sal, Kaysen Green, Santi Leon, Kane Neckler, The Distract, Ahmad Simsa, Chansu, Tom Gatson, Dead Air, Richard Tuttle, Jeremiah Cantero, Magic Wired, Debo 1980, Magic Matt, Michael Thompson, Mama Richmond, Next Snap, What's Up Playoffs 2024, Dylan Faye, David Duffy, Smith, Sheiks, Ship Sinks, Bueno Times, Stantino 1995, Suggs, Muggs, Daniel Anderson, Barry McElcaney, Will Spivey, Jay and Ryle. A big shout out to all of our Hall of Fame and Elite Tier patrons and all of our patrons. You can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. Now, let's get into our conversation with friend of the program, Drew Gooden. All right, Magic fans, in what is now a, I think, yearly tradition, I think that's that's where we're at. I think Seems this, to be. this guest, like, I don't know, fifth, sixth time on the show now. It's been It's been quite a bit. Um, you may hear the the voice, very you know, distinct, notable, famous voice of our uh, <laughs> best friend, cousin, brother of the show at this point. I don't know, Drew Gooden. What's up, man? Oh, How yeah. are you? Thanks for uh, joining I the show. I forgot here. it was escalating. Every time I came on, I became a different member. Of the, I can't remember mm-hmm. where, we, where we left off. It was it was starting to get weird. So maybe it's for the yeah. best that oh, it well. doesn't keep escalating. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's there's not many steps left. So yeah, we are getting close to weird, uncomfortable territory, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe this is where it, you're brother of the podcast. We'll just leave it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Can't awesome. get any closer than that. That's right. That's right. Blood, blood couldn't make us any closer. What have you been up to, Drew? How has uh, the last year been treating you? Um, the year's been good. Um, it was a really fun magic season. I'm trying to think of when the last time I was on was. I'm pretty sure it was before the season, and we were probably talking about our expectations for last season, and we were excited but cautiously optimistic and. I think even I, our optimistic expectations were probably not as high as what ended up happening. It was such a fun year. Uh, definitely my favorite year as a Magic fan, which isn't saying a whole lot considering the past decade or so. But um, it, yeah, so many great memories. Uh, went to the opening game, win by 30, city's going crazy. Uh, went to a bunch of six man events throughout the year, had some big wins, uh, except for that one OKC game where we got destroyed. But other than that, it was pretty much big win every time. Um, and then game 82 was awesome. We were down. Everyone's a little nervous. We go on that crazy run. Defense just goes up to another level. We're in the playoffs. I was at game three. That was the loudest I've ever heard the arena by far it was it was so much fun again everyone was kind of timid we went down early and then as soon as like franz got an and one i think to make it like nine to five then it's like we're getting back into it cole it's a big shot before you know it we're we're up 20 it was awesome it was a lot of fun uh really really excited for what's to come with the team and and it was it was such a great journey this year drew looking back on the season uh Give us your your aside from Palo because that's cheating. Give us maybe maybe it's not even the best, but your favorite player from this past season for the Magic. Um, I think outside of Paolo, it would probably be Jalen. I mean, Ji definitely ca- kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, that was another one where it's like we hope he could be this guy, but then he was pretty healthy and all things considered, pretty consistent, and and we sh- saw flash- flashes of of the guy we hoped he would be, but, but Jalen was so consistent. The fact that he's gone from shooting what he did two years ago to last year to this past season, like he seems to be a reliable shooter. His defense is great. Um, he's so much fun. I just feel like he's like the heart and soul of the team. So anytime there were big moments this year, it, it seemed to involve him somehow, even if he was just celebrating or going crazy or like, you know, saying this is his city, um, I think that would be the thing. Cause, cause if we were to get, talk about, you know, someone who was maybe disappointing, we would talk about Franz specifically from his shooting, you know, he's still great in so many other areas and, and is continuing to get better. But 
But if you look at someone outside of Paolo, I would say Jalen Suggs is probably my favorite player on the team. He's just so much fun. Drew, you mentioned how like game three of the playoffs was the loudest that you've heard that building. As someone who like lives in the city and, and you know you're you're around town all day, every day. Have you noticed like just more people wearing magic gear, more people talking about the magic? Like to you, what's your perspective on like just the feeling around town mm-hmm. about the magic? Yeah, I think so. Um I feel like I'm seeing more bumper stickers and and more shirts from time to time. I mean, I think that's what was so pleasantly surprising about the game and the playoffs as fun as they were it's also like you don't necessarily know how into it the city's going to be especially if you've gone to a random game in the past 10 years chances are 50 percent of the people there are for you know we're we're away fans uh especially if it's like a bigger team and it's like how passionate is orlando how how receptive are we to like a fun young team like this and to go there and i know i was excited i know you guys were there you were excited so many people were excited but then to just have an arena full of people just going just losing their minds it was so like reassuring like okay this is this can be like a cool basketball city with like a a a passionate fan base you know that yeah we're smaller market it's you know we're never going to be the lakers or whatever but it's like if this team continues to to succeed and do what they're doing it's gonna they're gonna have the support of the whole city and it's gonna be so much fun to go to these games especially as they get bigger and bigger going from that you you talk a little bit about like what might have been like disappointing to you you talk about franz wagner shot uh which still is super flat by the way uh yeah but even in these olympic games like it doesn't have an arc i don't know what's happening I have no idea what's going on. Well, it's also only been like a a month and a half. It's like, it's tough Mm because we we all just want him to stop playing basketball for a bit or stop playing professional, you know, organized Mm -hmm. basketball and just go shoot a million three point shooter uh, shots. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's like, if he just keeps going from the NBA to, uh, you know, playing internationally back then, it's like, it's just going to continue to be what it is. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating to see because it's like, just, put more arc on it wasn't there a stat (laughs) at one point where he was like doing better uh shooting a higher percentage on contested threes and the theory is like well yeah because he has to actually get it up and he's not just like trying to throw it straight at the rim um it's like just please just take a a a couple months off of Mm -hmm. (laughs) organized basketball and just work on your shot but i don't know yeah uh was there anything else for you that this season that you looked at that maybe your expectations were higher for that thing or that player? Um, I mean, I, I guess, uh, I would say in the playoffs, I think we really, really needed Gary Harris to be the veteran presence, the, the shooter that he is. And it, there were so many open, open shots. He got corner threes, open that just we needed that so bad one or two extra threes a game and we could have won in six you know we had a couple close games on the road um so while you know our expectations aren't super high for someone like someone like that he is you know a role player but it's still it's like that's what we needed out of him and we didn't get it i think in terms of the whole season i think Wendell was a little up and down um i know that the injury was a big part of it i think uh rushing back from it you know um because Gogo was playing so well, he's probably like, I got to get back out there and prove that I still have a spot on this team. And then he, he's not playing 100%, and it just kind of compounds it. Um, you know, Cole definitely had ups and downs, but but I think those kinds of guys, it's like there's, they're young, they're going to have ebbs and flows. I'm not like out on those guys. Um, it's just we feel we have high expectations because we've seen them grow and we know what kind of player they could be. Um, so, I mean, there's still areas for improvement and, and that's good for us, you know, that it's like we're this excited about the team, but we're still talking about it's like, yeah, but this guy probably could have been a little bit better. This guy's got another level like that's ultimately what it's going to come down to for us to keep improving is each player individually, you know, putting adding more things to their game. Speaking about guys who sort of had disappointing ends to the season, Gary Harris was really the entire playoff series. Franz didn't have the the great game seven and. Franz mm-hmm. gets the max extension. Gary Harris is now being you know, brought back. Drew, I wanted to just ask you, like, what were your expectations heading into the Magic offseason in terms of like what the front office was going to do? And then uh, just like how would you evaluate the offseason that the Magic had? Mm-hmm. 
Um, I feel I feel good about it. I think I think some fans got a little carried away with the possibilities. I think when you think about, oh, we've got fifty million dollars in cap space, it's like we could sign an all star, we could sign two really good starters or whatever. But then you see about you see how the rest of the offseason panned out, and it's like, well, we had to give Franz the money. It's like we don't want to let that guy go. We want to bring Ji back. I feel like that's a really good contract you start re-signing your other guys and that starts to, that space starts to go away, especially when you're projecting into the future. And I think as much as part of me or not even part of me, I would have been excited if we signed Paul George, I would have been like, that's so exciting that, that, you know, it's, people are going to be more interested, maybe more casual Orlando fans will be like, Oh, I know that guy. I know that name. Like I'll go to more, you know? Um, but it's like, I'm, I, honestly think for the future of the team that missing out on a guy like that if we have to sign him to a a four-year deal where he's gonna be 38 making 50 million dollars it's like when we have to pay paolo we have to pay franz in a couple years then it's like what happens to the rest of the team um i think i think it makes sense to take the to to look at the team now and think like well what what's the expectation for for the next season What's the goal? The goal is to win a championship. Was there anything we could have done this offseason to make us championship contenders next season or even the season after? I, I don't think so. So to get a guy like KCP, who is kind of an upgraded uh, Gary Harris, you know, it's like, and you still are going to rely on Franz getting better, Jalen getting better, Paolo obviously getting better, and it's all going to come down to that. Um, so my expectations were, I hope we sign somebody, but um i i feel like it's the perfect move uh the only player i really wanted more i think was malik monk and i was really disappointed when the the kings brought him back um because when i did my own 2k rebuild a few months ago that's who i signed and and we won a lot of games but it's also a video game so we would have won a lot of games anyway um i won a lot of games with uh aaron gordon and chumo kiki uh a few years ago so it's anything's possible on there but uh uh, yeah, I feel I feel good about the off season. I I don't I think they did what they had to do, and I think they made smart moves. And it's like, you know, maybe it's not the most exciting move, but we're trying to win a championship a few years from now. We're trying to be like Boston, right? And the goal is to build longevity, have depth, you know, have guys who can shoot and play defense. And it's like that's you know that's what we're doing. It's so funny to me. You talk about like you're generally happy, which is the consensus that Jonathan and I have come to as well, because mm -hmm. we didn't and shouldn't really have been of the expectation of like, oh, they're going to use that cap space to rework contracts and maximize what they've got. It's like you forget that they're like, they've got the financial guru power and it's like, oh, okay. So maybe I should trust them with that. But it was so funny that people like coming into the offseason were like, yeah, I just want to add shooting. You add KCP and everybody's ecstatic about it. And you don't do anything else but bring back who you brought. And it's like, you still added shooting. Mm -hmm. And now everybody is mad because <laughs> of what the Magic did. It's like, you, you got what you, you got shooting. Yeah. And sorry that you're, you're, you got your hopes up with the Paul George thing in the final 24 hours before free agency starts. It's like, yeah. that really put a wrench in things. And obviously, Clay Thompson and whatever, but like, I, I don't know. It, for, for me, that definitely, and we've talked about it on the show, but, did you see some of the you're on Twitter? So mm -hmm. I don't know if your stuff is like your algorithm is a lot of magic stuff. Or I mean, I have a, of... I have like a list of, of magic accounts. So when I want to go into magic, you know, mm -hmm. I'll I'll read the, I'll read all the That's discourse there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I saw a lot of it, a lot of back and forth. And it like I, I think, yeah, if we sign Paul George, it's like, OK, maybe we maybe we win one extra playoff series this year. But then what about next year? And it's like he's he's also 34. And is there any guarantee our goal should be to win a, as many playoff games as we can? And the best way to do that is to try to have a really good regular season. So we're a higher seed. So we have more home games. So we have weaker opponents. And if Paul George is only going to give us 50 games next year, at the expense of these other depth guys, it's like, I don't know. And is he going to be healthy yeah. for two months, three months of the playoffs? Like there's no guarantee. And I just think it's, you're, you'd really be shooting yourself in the foot a couple years down the road um, when you have to re-sign other guys. Um, and then the other one too, I think is, I think people were a little too excited about the idea of getting Isaiah Hartenstein for like not that much money when it's, 
he was an unrestricted free agent. He had a great season for one of the most popular teams. It's he wasn't going to like sneak under the radar and make, you know, get some uh, low value deal. Like he was a team was going to come along and pay him a bunch of money. And um, you just like, we can have our expectations in the off season, but you also got to be realistic. And also remember that there's guys on the team that you don't want to lose at the expense of bringing in, people who you don't know how they're going to mesh with the the chemistry and how they're going to fit into the rotation and all that. So I feel good. Just got to be patient. And and another thing too, with the Paul George stuff, it's like I've watched, obviously Philly gets him and, but I've also watched them get trolled into the ground about, Oh, con- like good luck staying mm-hmm. healthy with those two. And it's like the magic don't have a great injury history recently, especially. So it's like, did we want to subject ourselves to that? And and I understand at this point, like magic fans like myself who are talking myself off that there's slightly like at the beginning that it was coping, right? It was mm-hmm. like, cause I would have loved Paul George. Yeah, no, that's but make, make no mistake. We all would yeah. have been excited if it happened. <laughs> there is a little but bit of coping, but it's, it's there, you know, there's there is hindsight, like hindsight's 2020. And, and when you're like emotionally removed from that situation, it's like, okay, well, there are, there are like, to your point, there's a chance that he ruins continuity chemistry everything with those lineups that like mosley worked so hard to keep Mm -hmm. last year to keep that continuity to the point where he brought a guy like anthony black as a rookie completely off out who wasn't even in the rotation into the starting lineup so he didn't mess up chemistry on the bench Mm -hmm. so imagine how much he doesn't want to mess up and mess up chemistry with a starting lineup so yeah it's it's uh it was a whirlwind of emotions for sure but Mm -hmm. let the record show all three of us here are more than happy <laughs> with how the offseason turned out. Yeah, I think another thing to to keep in mind too is is I wasn't really around as a Magic fan during the years with who was the last GM or the GM at, that made a bunch of terrible moves and everyone hated Rob Hennigan. Hennigan. Hennigan, yeah. So you know he was kind of notorious for trading away young guys too soon before they had reached their value for these like middling role players, and I was thinking about it. It kind of seems like maybe some Magic fans. Are, are wanting to do things like that. I, I was looking back at last off season or, or last season, some of the big trades that were made. And I thought like, so, so what if we, you know, we got Paolo, he has a good rookie season. We're like, all right, we're going all in. Who, who do we trade for? Well, let's trade for Bradley Beal. You know, let's trade four first round picks, throw in Jalen Suggs. He's pretty good, but he hasn't proven much yet. You know, throw in a couple of young guys. And then a year goes by and it's like, not only do we give up four first round picks, we probably gave up the best player in the trade, at least the one with the highest you know ceiling. It's, it's so that's how we look back on those like um, Oladipo trades and, and Sabonis for uh, Serge Ibaka, you know, which that's not what Bradley Beal is. But just as an example, I think eh, it's not, so easy to... at this point. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't seem like he's that far off of that. Yeah, it's 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 so easy to get excited about these trades and these big moves and feel like we're not doing anything or get angry because we didn't win the off season, but it's like that. Yeah. There's things we could big, you know, big moves we could have made, but I just, I love this team too. I love that. We, I, I don't mind that we didn't shake it up that much. Cause I mean, yeah, maybe we, we make the same mistakes next year. We did this year. We still struggle with shooting. We still have, you know, some of the issues we had, but, but it's still, it's, it's been so much fun. Like I want to keep them together. I want them to keep growing. And I think, you know, all these guys can take their game to another level. And I don't know. I'm really high on the team. I'm, I'm, I did, like I said, you know, and maybe it's because I didn't get burned through those years of being so closely invested in like, oh, maybe Mario Hazonia is going to be your guy. You know, it's, I've, I've dealt with that as a, as a Miami Dolphins fan. The, you know, the constant like, oh, this is our guy. That's not our guy. That wasn't our guy. But this next guy will be our guy. You know, I get it. I get being burned and, you know, maybe you lose that optimism over time, but, I still feel it. <laughs> so you're you're so young. You got, you got so I know so back. naive with with this team. Like I like it makes sense to be optimistic in that respect. Drew, I wanted to ask you really quickly. Like when the season ended and we lose that playoff series, what what was that like for you? Because for me, like I almost mourned that team for like a week. Because mm-hmm. now, if you would have you know looked two months into the future, like most of that team is coming back. But my thing was at the end of that playoff series was like, I've, I've loved this team so much this year and it may not mm-hmm. look the same. So I, I mourned that almost for like a solid week. Like I was going through it like it, it was a breakup. Um, 
did you have any of that or you were just sort of, you know, on yeah, the next no, I definitely felt that. And I was also just bummed that, you know, even if we went on to get smoked by Boston, it's we still would have gotten to see a few more magic games. And it's I, I was just bummed that the season was over. I felt like we I felt like it was in within reach too. like I felt like we could have beat the Cavs. They weren't that much better of a team than us. I really don't think they were a better team than us. I think they had one extra home game and I think they had the best player in the series. And um, so it was it was hard. It was disappointing. I also had to delete a lot of bookmarks from Cavs fans. I was really, yep. <laughs> really excited to revisit. And I me just too. had to shamefully uh, delete those. So that was one of the worst parts for me. Um, but I, even with this team kind of staying the same going into next year, more or less, um, it still is going to be different because the expectations go up. And I know you guys have talked about this before where it's like, even if it's the exact same team next year, like we're not going to sneak up on anybody. It's not going to be the team that way overachieved the team that a lot of people didn't even think would make the playoffs. And now we're in a game seven as a five seed. And, you know, we have all these great moments throughout the season. We've got these young players who are ascending and proving people wrong. Like now it's like, okay, now we have, now we have a higher bar and we have to reach it. So even if we win the same number of games or slightly less, it's, we're not going to feel as elated as we are now. Now, you know, Franz is making $40 million a year. He better live up to that contract. Now it's not like, Oh, this is our, wow. We got this great young guy. What a steal. We got him at eight. Now it's like, we're paying him a lot of money to be the second best player on the team. And he really needs to be that, or that's going to limit our ceiling. So yeah, even though the team's pretty much the same, it's it's not going to be quite the same like carefree playing with house money kind of kind of vibes. So, I I definitely see where you're coming from there. And I will say one of my favorite parts of our exchanges over the Magic season was when <laughs> I shared some of our bookmark some of my bookmarks in the chat with with you and Jonathan. And you came back with, oh, I've got some too. And you like <laughs> sent some of them. I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to reply to that one if we win. <laughs> oh, and that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that was great. And then you also sent us a follow-up on uh, May 5th that just your text said, time to delete some bookmarks. <laughs> there, was, there was a girl. Um, I, don't, I don't know her name, and I, I don't really want to or care to name her. But she said, F that song. And I, mm. I, was, I was waiting. Leave the song was, out of it, guys. I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> to to go back at that bookmark but yeah that yeah. was a, a a sad time drew as we look at like the way that the eastern conference sort of broke you know this year with like philadelphia you know underachieving a little bit miami you know maybe not you know underachieving but they were hurt a lot of the year and now mm -hmm. you look at you know boston is still going to be really good new york got a lot better obviously philadelphia got a lot better in this offseason Milwaukee is going to have another year of, of Damon Giannis to see how those guys sort of, you know, work together. Cleveland is probably going to be like just as good as they were last year. The Magic, you know, ended up this season at, at five. Where do you see the Magic sort of like fitting into to that group next season? I think realistic best case scenario would be uh, three or four, maybe. I think Boston's still going to be the one seed. I think. New York could probably be two, maybe, you know, Philly should be good. Um, but it's, you know, it's just like going into last season, you look at all these teams on paper and you kind of project a, a world in which every player plays every game. And, you know, you're not ever rooting for in, uh, injuries, but it's just a part of it and you don't know who it's going to be. And we had a pretty lucky injury year, all things considered, especially compared to years past. So, you know, it could be that, Joe Allen Bede just has his healthiest year ever and they they're the one seed and they you know uh but then we have issues and we drop to like seven or eight um I think on paper I think we could definitely be top four um which I think is kind of the goal for the regular season so we can guarantee at least a game seven at home and try to just win one playoff series um but it's there's there's a lot of older guys that have played a lot of games in their careers that those other teams are depending on. And the regular season is about attrition as much as, as it is talent. It's about having the depth to withstand injuries so you can rack up wins and get yourself a higher seed. So while those teams may be better in the playoffs, if they can manage it and be at full strength, they're not necessarily in a, in a position to win enough games to, you know, uh, 
uh, supplant a, a team like us that I think has a lot of depth that I that I think could withstand some injuries. You know, I, I like our center rotation. I like our 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 depth. It, it's I. So all of that to say, you know, I, I think we can definitely do uh, reach top three, top four. It's just going to come down to factors that are out of our hands. And um, but the talent's there. I think we can make a jump. And Paolo, I think, has a whole other level to his game. I'm excited to see it. Um, excited to see how KCP fits in. And um, yeah, the 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 I, I think I think still Jet Howard could make a difference. I think Anthony Black could make a difference. We just don't know with these guys. So um yeah there's there's definitely bigger names on other teams but um there's a world where we uh overachieve expectations again you mentioned jet howard anthony black drew did you get a chance to watch the first summer league i did of the summer well, i watched league? the highlights but yeah so what from that what what surprised you maybe most about what you saw from the guys we were obviously we're all looking at um I mean, did AB shoot like three for three from three in the first game, or am I am I completely making that up? I think it was I, he hit one three, but he was getting to the free throw line a, a good amount and was dishing out the dimes yeah. for sure. I think my was, biggest was, takeaway. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say Jet was uh, AB was one for two from three, six of nine from the field, seven of nine from the free throw line, finished with you know twenty points and four steals. And then Jet Howard was five of ten from three, um, with twenty two mm. points and eight of fifteen from the field. So and four assists as well for Jet with only one turnover, which shouldn't be overlooked either. Yeah, no, that was definitely one takeaway. Was was Jet was making some extra passes there? I think, I I think he shows flashes as like a creator. I, I I'm I'm really excited about the two of them. Um, I'd have to watch the rest of the games a little bit more closely. I I, I did just watch the highlights of of their that the Magic put out. Um, but I think the potential's there. It's I, like I think I was saying to you guys before we started recording. What we want to see in summer league is these guys look like the best players on the court because they're going against a lot of guys who aren't going to be on NBA rosters and. Uh, probably aren't going to do much in these games and if they can go out there and perform really well that bodes well going forward i remember a couple years ago we went into summer league and it was like we're gonna we're gonna win this whole thing we got rj hampton and that didn't work it didn't work out like that so as long as these guys can you know uh look like the best players on the court like they did in in that first game i'm excited about it what are like some of the biggest questions to you like going into next season like Paolo Bancaro, right? Like the performance we saw game five on the road in Cleveland, you know, how great he was just th throughout the series. I think everybody feels pretty good about that guy. Everybody mm -hmm. else, there seems to still be some questions with like, okay, what does their ceiling look like? We still want to see these guys improve on this. Like what to you is still like the biggest questions for this magic team? Um, I mean, I think aside from Franz's shooting, which we've, we've already talked about and, and everyone has spent a lot of time talking about, I think, Maybe Jalen as a point guard is kind of a is is a big question because it seems like that's the direction they want uh, to take him in, not as a two guard, which I kind of thought maybe he would fit more there. You bring in someone who's a little bit more of a facilitator, you know, in a perfect world where Markel Fultz was able to shoot the ball and do more things and, and be more of a threat in that way. He'd, he'd be the perfect facilitator for that starting unit, but that just didn't work out that way. Um, so, but as, as much as he's improved, Jalen has offensively, it's like, can he, can he be the playmaker that gets everyone else open and, and good shots? Um, I think that's a big question mark. Cause it does seem like they're kind of like, all right, well, you're figure it out. Keep improving. You've gotten better every year in these other aspects. Can you, can you create your own shot more often? Um, and also can you keep up? I mean, it's, it was, he shot a lot of threes. So I, I don't think it's like a fluke, but there's still part of me where it's like, he was so bad as a, as a rookie, nothing could go down from three. It, it still doesn't feel real to me. Although when he does shoot it, I'm confident it will go in every time. So I just, I definitely want to see continued consistency there. Um, Cause I think he, he, he and Franz and Paolo are, it's our success and everywhere we go is going to ride on them. Um, we've seen so much from Paolo already that it, it really comes down to those other two guys. Um, 
Yeah. And I guess uh, AB a- and Jet, do they fit into the rotation? Are they going to find minutes? You know, because if AB's able to to be a point guard, if he's able to to run that second unit, I think that's big. Um, we just don't know because we haven't seen much from those two guys in actual NBA games where the minutes mattered and they're not just kind of being thrown in at the very end. Last thing here, where are you with your Miami Dolphins? <laughs> um, cautiously optimistic like I am every every offseason. I think no matter how many times uh, my beloved sports teams burn me, I have no choice to be optimi- but, but, but to be optimistic in the offseason because it's like, what else am I going to do? It's all hypothetical right now. It's all fake. Of course, I'm going to imagine that they'll win the Super Bowl. Um, I, I don't know do, if that's going to happen. Do you think that's realistic this year? I, I don't think it's. I, I think it's. I think it's too hard for them. I just want to win a playoff game. Oh my god, it's been 20 years. Can we just win one? I. I the. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think it's I don't think it's uh likely that they could win a Super Bowl after not even I, I it success is usually incremental. You you get to the playoffs, then you win a game or two, and then eventually you win the Super Bowl. I don't know how you go from getting destroyed in the playoffs two years in a row to now we're going to win four straight playoff games, especially if you have to go on the road for all of them. I just don't know if it's going to happen. Um there's so many people I love on the team. I love Tua at a death. He's I love him as a person. I'm pretty sure they're going to pay him a lot of money and I hope he can continue to stay healthy and be good, but he's really got to be good when it matters. And so far that hasn't really been the case. Um, I don't know. That's I, I, I'm excited that football's coming up soon, but it's just, I'm ready to be hurt again. I had a, I had a heart to heart with my dad after the last season. Um, Cause he and I are, you know, I, got into sports because of him he was a dolphins fan and and so i became one too and we've been diehards ever since we've watched every game for years and years and we live and die by the results to where you know we had some amazing moments and then there's just some there's some losses where it is heartbreaking and you sit there and i sit on my couch in silence for like an hour just moping and i'm just like what am I doing to myself? <laughs> I have no control over this. I just sit. My heart is racing. This can't be good for my health. I need to reevaluate, I think, my relationship <laughs> with sports to where I'm still able to enjoy the wins, but not be so, have it ruin my week. You don't get it both ways. But I know that's the thing. It's like I some of the greatest moments of my life have been at wins. We went to the the week one game last year. We flew to LA. I, I had kind of a, a whole trip planned out of it, but we went to see the the opening game. It was an incredible game. They won thirty seven to thirty five. It was it was insane. Um, it was and it was one of the greatest days of my life. But that and that doesn't happen if I don't suffer so much. But I I just uh, it's tough. I that's a kind of what I love about my relationship with the magic is I'm still I'm very invested. I watch almost every game. The only games I don't watch are just when I have other things going on or it's just kind of a random, you know, uh, regular season game. But I try to watch every game. I'm super invested. I'm plugged in. I listen to podcasts. Um, and when things go well, I'm super pumped up. And when things don't go well, I'm a little bummed, but I kind of just I kind of just move on. So maybe I'll never have as much of an attachment to win. Like if they win a championship, I don't think I'll feel as elated as you guys will have being in the trenches for so long, but I'm at least, I have a healthier relationship with it than I do with football where I'm like, don't, oh, Esther, man, my don't, ruined. don't ever underestimate a team's ability to crush your soul because <laughs> as, as excited as we all are for like the future of the magic, something could happen this season i'm I'm trying to knock on wood you know wherever i can mm-hmm. find that something could happen this season where we're like we had it all and then it, it was just gone and you have so many stories of that over the mm-hmm. history of of you know different sports franchises but hoping that you can just get that high and you don't have to yeah, experience yeah, yeah. all of the lows. i that i do dollars. i do have one more question for you drew on the back of you talking about you went to la and planned a whole trip about around it looking at the schedule for the dolphins this year uh, the first game that's away in the regular season is in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Would you plan a trip? Not necessarily for that, but if you looked at some other things, you guys play at Gillette Stadium, New England, and Lucas Oil. Yeah, I've thought about 
trying to do more weekend trips like that because it it is a cool excuse to just go to random cities you wouldn't go to otherwise. Um, I do think I'm going to go. I, they play the Rams in L.A. in like November. I think I'm going to plan a trip around that. Um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really want to go to Gillette Stadium. You use that as an example. That's a bad example. I'm not going there. I'm not <laughs> going to be the only Dolphins fan surrounded by a bunch of Patriots fans who are, you know, Boston sports fans, notoriously very nice and pleasant <laughs> to be around. Um, I I don't <laughs> think they'd take kindly to me. Um, but, yeah. Awesome. Drew, as, as funny as you are, as great as you are at, you know, all the, the YouTube stuff, it's so impressive to me that you still like find the time to be so keyed into, you know, your, your sports teams and are so knowledgeable and able to speak on them like at the cuff. So commend you for that. Cause uh, again, Thanks. if you haven't, uh, you know, check Drew's YouTube out, like his, his stuff out there is, is the best. And when I get time to sit down and watch it, unfortunately, I shamelessly text Drew and tell him how great he is and all that kind of <laughs> and stuff. And I so love Drew, getting those texts every time. Sure Always you do. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you do. I I feel like cringe when I send them to you, but I'm like, <laughs> I just want my friend to know how awesome I think he is. At, no, at it's uh, it's nice. It's it's good to spread the love. Um, I try to remember to do that more often when I'm watching a friend's video and I'm like, I should tell them that I like this because it's, right. it's always nice to get those. I always appreciate those from you. Um, yeah, if you guys liked listening to me talk about magic basketball, my channel is nothing like that. I <laughs> talk about everything else but sports. But uh, yeah, ch check it out if you want. Let them know where they can find it, please. Uh, just Drew Gooden on YouTube. Um, I make videos like once a month. I'll kind of just spend the whole month kind of figuring out what I can rant about. And uh, then I do. Then I complain about stuff, try to make it funny and entertaining and informational if I can. But um, how close are you in like your like never ending quest to be the most famous Drew Gooden? <laughs> um, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I, you, I feel there. like you gotta be there. I feel like in terms of current day relevancy, have I have to be. I think if I think most people who are googling Drew Gooden are looking for me as compared to him. Now, he, there's a lot of areas he has me beat. Don't get me wrong. He's <laughs> six foot ten. I will never dream of being that tall. He made like a hundred million of being dollars. That tall. Well, I do dream of it. Yeah, you I made guess a whole not... video about it. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, didn't succeed at it. I wanted to. I you can aspire to anything, but that doesn't mean <laughs> you're going to get it. Um, yeah, he's made like seventy million dollars. I think he's got a cool job now. He commentates uh, for the Wizards. Um, and anytime I go to a Magic and Wizards game, and if I can, I take a photo of the back of his head. So <laughs> just a fun little tradition I have that uh, he doesn't know that I do. And, and for context, Drew Gooden, that Drew Gooden only has 55 YouTube subscribers. So oh, you've got him by I a cool 4.2 something million. I mean, I, you've got it in the bag, I would say, Drew. Yeah. Um, you know, only the, the, it's becoming the point where like we're getting far enough removed away from like Drew Gooden's time in the league. That it's like we're gonna get to the point where a lot of people just don't know who Drew Gooden is. So uh, as long as you mm -hmm. keep up the YouTube thing, you've got a promising future in that, and uh, <laughs> and I, I think you'll be all right. Yeah, and that's the goal to be the most famous Drew Gooden. Yep. So maybe people will stop the, <laughs> mentioning me on Twitter whenever they complain or whenever they try to defend LeBron because they're like, look who was on that 2006 or whatever Cavs team. It's always at, it's always at me. It's like, dude, that was I was 12. I, I wasn't do? on that team. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty funny. Incredible. Well, if you don't already follow Drew all over social media, subscribe to the YouTube. He's, he's the best out there. And, and Drew, man, we love you. We appreciate you taking the time, man. Always a ton of fun. And Hopefully your your dolphin season goes well and the magic season you know goes well and you don't have any more sports heartbreak at least not this year. <laughs> Never again. We're winning every championship and every Super Bowl from now until the end of the time. But then it then it won't feel the same. You know, you got to have some heartbreak to appreciate the the good moments. But You're anyway, spoken like a me. true degenerate. We appreciate it, Drew. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Always a blast catching up with Drew. We appreciate Drew for taking the time. Again, if you don't follow him on social media, you haven't subscribed to him on YouTube, please go ahead and do that. Um, one of my favorite episodes that we get to do you know, every year, a couple of times a year, is having Drew on the show because, again, super passionate about the magic. Smart guy, funny guy. Um, just love hanging out with him. Love talking magic with him. And potentially 
the last time I get to really sit down with Drew um, on an I episode. I wasn't going to say it, but... And uh, unfortunate, to say the least, because he's he's one, definitely one of my favorite guests, your favorite guest, guest to have on. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just nice to have a guy that is just simply a fan, but, you know, might might miss a couple games here and there, but he's by no means a casual fan. Like he, like he said, he sits down for most Listen, magic folks. games. Excuse that guy if he's got other stuff going on. Like, just go take a glance yeah, at the YouTube. Perhaps. Like, he's a successful guy. He's going to have things come up time to time that we don't have anything else going on. Okay? This is this is the, <laughs> the thing that we are known most for in our lives is talking and, and you know, you're watching the magic. So, forgive and, Drew if he doesn't you know, have the time to watch every single game. But that being said, he just is just, he knows a ton about it about the game, about his, you know, about the magic in general. So always good to get his insight and, uh, and he's been super good to us. Speaking of uh, Luke and uh, time on the pod next mm. episode, which is going to come out uh, Thursday is going to be Luke's last episode, at least in a, a regular manner on the pod here. So we've opened up the voicemail box. So if you want to call and, and leave Luke a, a message and, to sort of send him off in the best way possible. Or you can call 407-603-1189. We've already got a good number of voicemails. Um, we just want as many as possible to, to let you know Luke know how much he's loved and appreciated you know in these parts. So uh, make sure you guys call, leave Luke a voicemail, and those will air uh, during our next episode. So call 407-603-1189. Luke, anything else before we wrap this one up? I believe we touched on everything all right that is going to do it for this one for luke sylvia this has been jonathan osborne you all have been listening to the six man show and we will catch you guys next time see ya thanks for listening to the sixth man show be sure to subscribe on itunes and spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone if you enjoyed the show please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review it helps out the show a lot Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Six Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!